Hello AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here for our final video for our AB integration techniques review here for topic 6.REV. REV. We're going to be talking about example 6 and in example 6 we're going to be focusing on an integrand that requires a trigonometric identity. Sometimes these happen, they sometimes just can't be avoided and as you move deeper into some BC integration techniques using a trig identity every now and then is certainly going to be something that's fair game. So let's go ahead and take a look at this example. As I said it's example number six in your notes, the very last one, and it involves us having to integrate tangent squared of 2x with respect to x. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to start off by talking about some things that I do not want you to do. Things that will not work. Things that will be absolutely positively dead wrong. And one of those things is to misapply the power rule for integration. You remember the power rule that says that if you're integrating something like an x to the second power you would get x to the third power over 3. Well, oftentimes students might want to misuse that rule here and think that they can integrate this tangent squared and get tangent cubed of the 2x over 3. And this is bad. We don't want that to happen. So we have to think of a viable way to integrate this. And right now, Integrating tangent squared is not anywhere on our radar. We don't have a formula for it. However, we're pretty close to being able to integrate it. And all that we have to do is we have to reach back into our trigonometric toolbox and recall an identity that looked a little something like this. 1 plus the tangent squared of, and I'm going to use theta as my variable here, is equal to the secant squared of theta. Okay. It's one of your Pythagorean identities from trigonometry. Probably you remember the most famous one is sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Well, this one belongs in that same family. In fact, you could probably take sine squared plus cosine squared equaling 1 and maybe manipulate that a little bit by dividing it by another trigonometric uh, uh, function to a second power and it would actually produce this one. But that's a topic for another video altogether. So anyhow, this is the formula that I want us to use here. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this tangent squared of 2x. So instead of tangent squared 2x, we're going to call this, well, we're going to have to manipulate this just a little bit more, I think, because this formula that I've got up here needs just a bit more tweaking. And we can write it like this. The fact that the secant squared is just the, uh, I'm sorry, the tangent squared is just the secant squared minus 1. And that's what's going to happen here. Now, as far as the 2x is concerned, that's going to take the place of the theta. It really doesn't matter what the argument is within the function. In this case, 2x is going to travel wherever our theta is, and so we just write it as such. So this is what we're going to integrate. Now, what motivated us to do this? Because it just, like, I'm just going to take Mr. Record's word for it. He just says to use this identity. But all of a sudden, it looks like this thing's more complicated. It's got a slightly uglier trig word, secant, right, versus tangent. And we have this one floating around. Well, the thing that we have to focus on is the fact that we have something that is very integrable. In other words, the integration of secant squared of theta, let's call it, should be very easy for us to handle because we know that that's equal to tangent of theta. Think backwards. The derivative of tangent is secant squared, so why wouldn't the integration of secant squared be tangent? And so that's our motivation for using this trig, trig identity in the first place. However, there is just one little wrinkle, one little curveball in the mix, and that's the fact that we're not integrating secant squared of just plain old x, we're integrating secant squared of 2x. So that means we are going to have to throw in just a little u substitution here, letting u be this 2x course we have to take that derivative which is indeed 2 and all that tells us is that we're going to have to offset with the reciprocal of 2. We're going to have to place a 1 half in front of our result. So we put that 1 half there and then when we integrate this secant squared as I said before we will get tangent 
And then instead of just writing the tangent of u, let's do our back substitution right now just to get it out of the way. And we have the integration of our first term already taken care of. And then we integrate 1 with respect to x. And of course, that will give us just an x. And then don't forget your plus c. Next thing that I'd like to do is to, as, as usual is to go ahead and check this answer on a cast device. So here we are with our trusty TI Inspire calculator, and I'm going to go ahead and throw in that integration template. And the problem was to integrate tangent of 2x squared. Now notice, uh, with most calculators, you're going to have to use parentheses first to wrap around your entire expression, tangent of 2x in this case, before you can square it. In other words, you can't really nestle that square after the tangent like we see it written. And then we'll do this with respect to x. And we're hoping that this is equal to the answer that you have on your paper, which I believe is 1 half tangent of 2x minus 1. So we hit enter and we think, what in the world just happened? We have something that doesn't look anything like the answer that we have on pencil and paper. But fear not, there, there still is hope. One thing that I've mentioned to you before, if you're one of my students, is to go ahead and test the identity relationship of the calculator answer versus your pencil and paper answer. And the easiest way to do that is just to push the up arrow button on your calculator to highlight that last entry line and hit your enter button so that it just copies onto the next available line. And then we would set that equal to the answer that you had on pencil and paper. So that means I'll type in 1 half times, and I believe we had the tangent, of 2x minus x. You don't have to worry about your plus c's. And what we're going to look for here is a true or false, a Boolean algebra argument, true or false. And in this case, the answer is true, which is good, because that doesn't mean, uh, that means that we have the right answer, and it doesn't mean that we have to go in and look and see where our mistake occurred. Now, sometimes on the CAS calculators, the more sophisticated the expression is, the harder it is for the calculator to be able to determine the truth or false behind it. And as I've said before, we may have to graph both of those functions on a graph entry line to see if they indeed are the same curve. So for the purpose of this problem, we know that our answer is right. Therefore, we can go ahead and circle it. And not only does that finish this example six and the video up, but that does finish our video series for all of topic 6.REV. For the purpose of my students and my curriculum at Avon High School, the very next topic is topic 6.11, 6.11, which is going to uh, introduce the concept of integrating using uh, a feature called integrating by parts, which is your first official BC technique. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you at the next video.